1947, Genovese mobster Joe Valacci was involved in a sit-down with Albert's Anastasia after he had punched Luciano, another made man. Let's check it out. I'm James Gladwish and welcome to OC Shorts. Bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the time a sit-down was held involving Albert Anastasia and Luciano after Joseph Valacci had laid his hands on another made man. Before he became a government informant, Joseph Valacci was a long-time soldier in what is now known as the Genovese crime family's Greenwich Village crew. Throughout his mob career, Joseph Valacci had various partners in his criminal operations. One of these was Frank Luciano, a soldier in the then Mangano crime family. By 1963, the FBI had Frank Luciano listed as a soldier in what had become the Gambino crime family. He was in a Manhattan-based crew under Captain Charles Dongara. Previous captains of this crew over the years had allegedly been Joseph Staten Island Joe Riccobono and Stephen Armone. Under Charles Dongara, other members of this crew included the likes of Joseph Piney Armone, Joseph N. Gallo, Robert Crapanzano, Frank Gagliardi, and Joseph Manfredi. Known on the streets as Frankie Miller, Frank Luciano was born in Salerno, Italy on the 5th of May 1900. The FBN had Luciano listed as living at 14 to 24, 144 Place, Whitestone, Queens. They also noted that two of Frank Luciano's criminal associates were Paolo and Carlo Gambino. The Federal Bureau of Narcotics would write the following summary of Frank Luciano. One of the most important mafiosi in the Bronx, NYC, engaged in hijacking, shylocking, bootlegging and narcotic trafficking. Instrumental in smuggling narcotics into the US. In 1946, Joseph Valacci and Frank Luciano were partners in the Lido restaurant at 1362 Castle Hill Road, the Bronx. The book, The Valacci Papers, written by Peter Mars with Joseph Valacci, would state, Frank Luciano, his partner in the Gastam Racket, invited him to join forces in a new restaurant called The Lido in the Castle Hill section of the Bronx. The liquor license was in the name of Luciano's son, Anthony, since he had no police record at the time. Valanci invested $15,000 as his share, and 250 customers turned out for the grand opening in the winter of 1946. With the approach of spring, the average weekly take was around $2,500, and Valanci was delighted. It was, he says, almost too good to believe. However, this partnership between Joseph Valacci and Frank Luciano soured after Valacci learned that Luciano was incurring heavy gambling losses and then caught Luciano stealing money from their restaurant business. In a rage, Joseph Valacci delivered a severe beating to Frank Luciano. An FBI file based on Valacci's information would state, As an example of a personal difference that ended in a carpet for him, NYT1 related that he had a partner, Frank Luciano, in a bar at one time, who was a member of another family. He determined that his partner had embezzled money from the business, and when confronted became insulting. NYT1 related he physically attacked his partner, a violation of the rules of Cosa Nostra, punishable by death. The partner's thefts were lesser infractions of the rules of Cosa Nostra by comparison. As noted in the FBI file, Joseph Valacci had committed a cardinal sin with regards to the rules of Cosa Nostra by putting his hands on another made man, regardless of the fact that Frank Luciano had been stealing from him. According to Valacci, Frank Luciano told him that he wouldn't report the beating. But Valacci soon heard that Luciano had reported the attack to his mob superiors 
and was bragging that he would own the whole restaurant when Valanci was out of the way. Looking for advice, Joseph Valanci went to Willy Moretti, a powerful mobster in the then Charlie Luciano crime family. The FBI file reads, NYT1 stated that he immediately went to Willy Moretti at Duke's Tavern in New Jersey and told him the full story. Moretti admonished him for assaulting Luciano and told him that everything would be handled. NYT1 suggested to Moretti that any carpet be delayed a few days until swelling and marks of the beating of Luciano would subside. Valachi had stated his case to Moretti, a senior figure in his crime family, and so Valachi would have some support when a sit-down, or carpet as Valachi called it, would occur. Which of course it did shortly later. The FBI file states, Within the week, NYT1 was called to Duke's Tavern, and upon arrival was seated at a table in the public dining hall with Albert Anastasia, Anthony Strollo, Frank Luciano and Charlie Brush. Joseph Biondo was eating in the restaurant but did not participate. As we can see in the FBI file, those involved in this sit-down included Albert Anastasia, the then underboss of the Mangano crime family, Anthony Tony Bendestrollo, who was Valachi's captain in the Greenwich Village crew of the Charlie Luciano crime family, Frank Luciano, a Mangano family soldier, Anthony Charlie Brush Zangara, another member of the Mangano crime family. Although some reports state that Charles Dongara was known as Charlie Brush, but this may be inaccurate. The file also states that Joseph Biondo, a highly respected figure in Cosa Nostra and future underboss to Carlo Gambino, was also in Duke's tavern at the time, but was not part of the sit-down. Frank Luciano's captain, Joseph Staten Island Joe Riccobono, was not present as he was ill at the time. Hence, why Albert Anastasia would be representing the interests of Frank Luciano. Something that terrified Joseph Valachi. The book, The Valachi Paper, states, The news had, to put it mildly, an unsettling effect on Valachi. In the savage world of the Cosa Nostra, Anastasia had a reputation for incredible ferocity. Worse yet, from Valachi's standpoint, Anastasia was as unpredictable as he was bloodthirsty. Now I got to worry, he says, and who can blame me? Everybody knows that Albert is a mad hatter. With him, it was always kill, kill, kill. If somebody came up and told Albert something bad about somebody else, he would say, hit him, hit him. At the table, there was no way of telling how he would be. Joseph Alacci evidently concerned about the outcome of the sit-down with Albert Anastasia involved. The FBI file continues. Anastasia took over the table and after admonishing NYT1 for striking Luciano, pointing out that a war between families could have ensued as a result of his attack on Luciano, no matter what the provocation, ruled that Luciano was to be paid $3,000 by NYT1, who was to take over exclusive ownership of the Lido bar. Anastasia pointed at Luciano and told him that he was a crook. As can be seen, Albert Anastasia reprimanded Joseph Alacci for assaulting Frank Luciano. Anastasia stating that this act could have resulted in a war between the Mangano crime family and the Charlie Luciano crime family, headed at that time by Frank Costello. Joseph Alacci is ordered to pay Mangano crime family soldier Frank Luciano $3,000, but that Valachi would now be the sole owner of the restaurant with Frank Luciano out of the business. Joseph Valachi would state that it was an unusual sit-down because evidently Anastasia came to the meeting having investigated the problem prior to arriving. The FBI file would state, NYT1 pointed out that this is not the usual manner in which an arguing amenda is held, in view of the fact that both sides present their arguments and then a ruling is made. This instance differed 
in that Anastasia obviously had the facts, both from Luciano and Moretti, and had arrived with a decision, probably formulated by agreement with Moretti. I know some of you may have thought that this was going to be a video about Joseph Valacci punching Charlie Luciano, but I hope you found it interesting anyway. Thanks for watching.